This is the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Podcast, episode number 10. This is the Happy Diabetic Kitchen, the podcast about people who love to eat and cook healthy. This is your guide to the world of healthy cooking and conversation about happy diabetic living and lifestyles, where we turn ordinary ingredients into something extraordinary. Welcome to the kitchen and let's get cooking. Hello everyone, I'm Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and this is the Internet's Most Delicious Cooking Podcast. Welcome to the kitchen, and as always, in the kitchen with my co-host, Jason. How you doing, Jace? Hey, I'm pretty good. All right. How about yourself? I, listen, I have never had it so good, but I read something interesting in the news. It looks like Whole Foods and Amazon are ready to go on a battle royal with Walmart. Is that why? I, I'm thinking, I read an article about about the fact that Walmart bought this huge online retailer called Jet.com for like $3 billion. Now, I heard Walmart bought this clothing company called Bonobos. What does Jet do? I, it's an online retailer of some sort that apparently has some ties with grocery and just big infrastructure in online. Interesting. Right? So Walmart's basically... They're looking to go after Amazon right? In the, in the online retail business. That's right. So I think there's like a collision course. I also heard that Whole Foods allows Amazon to have m- many, many more refrigerated situations where they can store food and house food and ship it out easier because they don't, I guess they don't have many refrigerated situations right now. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So basically it, they have like a built-in network of... Food warehouses. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Exactly right. Are you a Whole Foods fan? Have you ever been to one? Um, I, I, I've been to a Whole Foods. Um, they've never had Whole Foods in any of the places I've lived. So, I, I mean, I've been to many Whole Foods clones. And I don't know. From what I understand, like, there, there are good deals there and bad deals there. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, no strong feelings about Whole Foods one way or the other. Yeah, there's not one near where I live. Um, but when we're out and about in a big city, kind of fun to go to. You know, interesting to look at all the interesting products. and um, For sure. I mean, they're, they're pretty cool. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that Amazon gets into a situation like that. I mean, I mean, I wonder what what specifically is, you know, the the, the food market, you know, that you know, online ordering is really going to cater to. I mean, I have a hard time believing that uh, brick and mortar grocery stores are ever going to be replaced for one thing. I mean, I know that we, you know, we ordered lobster once online, um, but that's mainly because, you know, we live in Iowa where you can't really get fresh lobster. So, you know, I guess for things like that, that it could make sense. Sure. I mean, that makes the, the world flat, right? I mean, being able to get foods like that from all over the place shipped to you overnight or within a couple of days. But I agree with you. I don't think there's going to be anything that will replace going to the supermarket and, you know, smelling the fruit, buying the vegetables, picking them out the way you like and taking them home. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I guess another thing that just came to mind is, you know, seasonal fruit. I wonder if it's possible to, to like overnight ship fresh fruit from you know, the, the other side of the world or whatever. I, I think we're going to find out if Amazon can do it. Okay. That's what it sounds like to me. Well, we have a good show today. I mean, I'm excited to be back in the kitchen again. Um, we've got some great recipes. Let's get into that. Uh, this week's Happy Diabetic Kitchen recipe is Annie's Vegetable Boats of Love. Annie is my niece and a type 1 diabetic, and she was kind of the inspiration for this dish. Uh, a very requested recipe and certainly a lot of fun, especially if you have kiddos around. And then we also have an amazing interview with a world-class chef, Chef Amand here from Bettendorf, Iowa. We'll be talking about taking the mystery out of Indian cuisine and cooking with herbs. 
Chef Amand is an expert, and I'm looking forward to sharing my interview with him. And then, of course, we ask the chef where we take listener questions, our cooking tip of the week that you can't live without, and much, much more. So, Jason, let's get into the kitchen and get cooking. All right, let's do it. And now it's time for the recipe of the podcast, one of my favorites. We call this Annie's Vegetable Boats of Love. No dishes are needed for this fun and healthy treat. It's really fun to eat and fun to make. It's totally exploding with antioxidants, fresh vegetables. This is an amazing dish that really kids will love and kids will love to help you make. This is a snack you can take on the go, to a soccer game, on a hike, it's kid-friendly, fun to make, and really fun to eat. So let's get into it. Here's what's in it. One green, yellow, or red bell pepper washed. One bunch of celery washed. One carrot washed and peeled, or you can use those baby carrots. Some broccoli, pea pods, asparagus. The beauty of this recipe is you can use just about any vegetable you like. If you don't like asparagus, use something different. And of course, your favorite buttermilk style salad dressing. So we're going to cut the pepper in half from side to side. I like to leave the stem on if possible. I'm going to clean out the seeds from the inside out and wash it really good. So now you have two pieces in front of you. One will be your pepper shaped bowl. Cut the other half of the pepper into skinny slices. Cut the carrot into skinny sticks about four inches long. Cut the celery also into skinny sticks so they're about four inches long. You've got your snow peas. And so you're going to build them right into the boat. So imagine this. The carrots go into the boat of the pepper. The celery go in there. The asparagus can go in there. The snow peas can go in there. The broccoli can go in there. So now you've got a boat in the palm of your hand with all these vegetables. Add a little salad dressing to the bottom of your pepper-shaped bowl. And you have vegetables that you can dip in your dressing in a little boat while you're hanging out. I mean, it's not only portable, but delicious. And you can eat the veggies with a little dressing. That's always good. And when you're finished with the veggies, now you're ready to eat the bowl. I'm going to post this recipe on my website. Go to the website, happydiabetic.com. And click on the picture. I'll have it there on the main page of Annie's Vegetable Boats of Love. Delish. Hey, so I hear we have an interview this week. Uh, We do. Chef Amon is an old friend and an amazing chef. He is the chef owner of Hemisphere's Bistro in Bettendorf, Iowa, and he has agreed to take the mystery out of one of my favorite cuisines. And I know you love this cuisine, too. It would be Indian cuisine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we both love that. Um, But I think it's a misunderstood cuisine. I think a lot of people are intimidated by the spices and the heat, Mm -hmm. sometimes even the color of it. So um, Chef Amon owns an amazing restaurant called Hemisphere's Bistro, and um, he's an expert in the field. So I just thought, let's just get him involved. And we talked a little bit about herbs and spices. Um, we talked about his favorite dish, spicier mild. We we got into a bunch of interesting topics. Well, listen, enough of me. Let's head into Chef Amon's kitchen at Hemisphere's Bistro. Great. I want to hear it. Hello, everybody. I'm Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and I have a special treat for you today. We are here at an amazing restaurant. In a moment, you're going to meet an amazing chef. Matter of fact, he's an award-winning executive chef with over 25 years in the food service industry. Super skilled in high-volume, scratch-based cooking and menu planning. And when it really comes to cooking with love, Chef Amon is your man. 
Now, Aman got his first taste in the restaurant biz when he was 17 years old as a dishwasher at his parents' restaurant in Bombay, now Mumbai, India, and is now the owner, along with his wife, of Hemisphere's Bistro in the heartland of Bettendorf, Iowa, on the banks of the Mississippi River. We're really not on the banks, but you know, when you tell people that you live near the Mississippi River, they know right away where you are. Hemisphere's Bistro is Amon's restaurant. You'll find it at hemispheresbistro.com. So, Amon, welcome. Thank you glad for having have, me on this podcast. Yeah, glad to Chef have you. Lewis. Glad to have you in the in the kitchen. Um, so, tell the, tell our listeners out there. Why don't you fill in some blanks, Amon? Tell us how you got started. Talk me through it. Well, uh, as you just mentioned, it was a family business, and at a very young age, uh, they put me through this. Uh, it was a task where I was not sure if I wanted to do, only because I saw them day in and day out in, in the business, you know, working 15 hours plus. Um, I was a young man and uh, with a lot of energy and courage, so I said, you know what, I'm going to give this a shot. And I started with right down as a dishwasher, cleaning, you know, and doing a lot of prep work in the kitchen. And I thought that that's, I still think that that's the way to do it. You know, that I know the nitty gritty of it. And, uh, you know, I just, being a chef now, uh, you know, over 25 years in the business, I'm still not fully learned. I feel I can learn more each day. With yeah, my I think that's really yep. true for chefs, right? Absolutely. I mean, yep. It's a constant learning experience, yes. don't you think? Absolutely, yeah, it is. Absolutely. So, Chef, how would you describe your cooking style? Well, as you know, I have some of the Indian background. I've been living in the United States uh, 20 years or so, and um, I um, was dealing with people uh, asking me to flavor their food besides just using uh, normal seasonings. So I did introduce uh, here at Hemisphere's Bistro uh, different cuisines of, you know, like a global concept, but using a lot of the Indian flair. Uh, and, and you know, as you know, the spice trade started back in Asia uh, through the uh, East India Company, which was formed by the British government, and they bought all the spices back from India mm. and the Asian countries to uh, the, the the Western world. I feel that that is something which still people are kind of curious about: that how to use some of those uh, spices uh, in a day-to-day -day, uh, basis and the herbs, especially. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, because I'd like to talk about spices. Can we do that? Sure. Chef Ramon is a master of many types of cooking. You might find made-to-order ramen, to smoked chicken nachos, to soft lobster spring rolls of love, to tandoori flank steak. So, I mean, lots of different fusions, lots of different flavors. I mean, your concept is super original. It is. Yeah. It is. Hard to execute? Uh, sometimes it can be. It's only because uh, there's a lot of preparation involved, and uh, me being a one-man show won't work. So I took upon uh, training my staff accordingly, and you know I give them one-on-one, -on -one, and that's how you know it's it's hands-on. Uh, most of them have picked up from where I started with them, and then I think they are all doing an amazing job as far as uh, learning different cuisines, and I think we. We, that's the reason we pick a day. Yeah. Like ramen's on Thursday, and you know we are coming up with fikasha Fridays for lunches. So we use uh, fikasha and then different flavors of protein and also vegetables. Uh, try to use fresh ingredients as, yeah. as much as possible. So you can probably hear, for the listeners who can't be here today, we are in your restaurant. We're in your yes. dining room, close to your kitchen. Uh, experiencing the sights and sounds and smells, and I just have to tell you, it's unbelievable. So, if it's okay with you, Chef, can we talk about Indian cuisine? Yes. I mean, in one, it's one of my favorites, and I think it's so misunderstood. I mean, people have this weird thought about Indian cuisine. Can you share your love and passion for that cooking style? Sure. Yes. Uh, people associate Indian uh, cooking with uh, curries most of the time. And I feel there's more to it than just curries. Yes, there are all different kinds of curries from different regions of India. Like the northern Indian cook, uh, is a different uh, curry. The southern part uses a little bit of coconut in there, using the same spices. 
But besides the curries, there are uh, the other other things, the, the unleavened bread, you know, uh, made on, um, uh, they're like made in tandoor ovens. They are also made in just flat top griddles. Uh, there's also a lot of kebabs. I mean, that's where the kebabs come from, where ah, okay. there's a lot of marination, a okay, lot of brining yeah. of uh, the protein, and uh, you know, giving it six to eight hours. It all depends what uh, the protein is. But this, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said the spices. That's where people know how to uh, use the spices to enhance the flavors. So a lot of ginger and garlic is used. Uh, yogurt, uh, you know, uh, those kinds of marinade because of the acid in the yogurt breaks it down. The ginger gives it a little bit of pungentness. And then a lot of the turmeric, which is also an antiseptic, antioxidant, people use a lot of that in the uh, Indian cuisine and also to give natural color to the food from turmeric. It is a very bright yellow. So people think, okay, how did this uh, chicken turn color all of a sudden? So that's what it is. I, I love to hear about the yep. antioxidants. I mean, you know, yes. for people want to eat healthy, that is a big key. Now, to cook delicious Indian cuisine, do I need a lot of specialized pots and pans and tools? Or Not really. Not really. It's generally, uh, you know, very basic uh, cookery you know, utensils are required. Yeah. Now, I noticed that Indian food use, tends to use more vegetables, beans, lentils. Is that a correct assumption? Yes, it is. It is. O only because India is, uh, there are a lot of vegetarians and vegans in India. So in order to make that interesting and flavorful, uh, the, veg you know, the vegetables to make those and legumes to make them interesting and flavorful, the spices are used in order to... Uh, you know, enhance yeah. the eating, the palate, kind of like, in, so you can eat bite after bite at least, you know, for a little bit. I'm all about the bite yeah. after bite. <laughs> Especially your cooking, chef. True. Your bite after Thank bite's you. amazing. Um, well, the Happy Diabetic Nation knows that everything in moderation is really the key, right? That's correct. So it's easy to say that some foods are healthy, but really, portion control is super important. Big time. But one thing that I noticed whenever I go to eat Indian food at my favorite restaurant, I seem to get smaller portions in shareable dishes. So is that a very traditional way of is, eating Indian it is, food? It is extremely traditional. That way you can try uh, multiple uh, items. So I think that's the way the Indian family generally, you know, at our, at our family table too, when we sit down and eat, there are multiple things which come and everybody kind of like it's family style. Yeah. Most of it, even in the restaurants. Yeah. So. If you had to change the misconception of Indian food in a couple sentences for the folks that are listening to this podcast, what would you say to make them to want to go out to their local uh, restaurant in Washington or Seattle or Omaha, Nebraska? What would you say? I would say extremely flavorful. 90% uh, of it is very, very healthy. And some of it, yes, they use uh, butter and cream on some of the dishes, but not all. So I would say lots of flavor, fresh, crispy, way to go. Will the owner kick me out if I ask them to go easy on the heat? Not really. Not really. Okay. So, I mean, I find, yes. I mean, I'm not a really super spicy guy, and I know my local guy, where I go to eat Indian cuisine, I he's always fine with helping me to tone down the heat. Very much so. Yeah. Yes. So don't be afraid of the heat, right? Don't, yeah, don't be afraid of the heat, and ask if you're... You know, if you, if you don't want it to be really, really hot, yeah. as far as spices are concerned, then they can tame it down always. Yeah, the flavors are amazing yes. of Indian cuisine, right? I you can't beat what, that. Yes. Yeah, you really can't yep. beat it. Okay, well, that that's a super interesting topic, but another topic that I'm really interested in is how you use herbs and spices. Um, what, what's your go-to herb and spice? I mean, what... what? Well, I like... I like to use basil, cilantro, oregano, uh, fresh thyme, rosemary. I, I can do, uh, you know, even dried in those. Yeah. You know, and then the dry, dry spices, I would recommend that they are used when a dish is being finished. Like okay. you can just finish it with the dry spices. Okay. So, I'm yeah. so here's a question that I get asked a lot. When should I add the fresh 
When should I add the dry when making a dish? Well, I would, I would, uh, if there is something to be marinated, like if, for example, if you're marinating pork or beef or chicken, you use uh, dry spices and they go in, in the marination process. So whatever it calls for, like a vinaigrette or some kind of acid, and then oils and the dry spices. Yeah. And then after that, you, know, you can grill them, you can saute them, or just bake them right. with the dry spices. Uh, well, fresh spices, I would recommend that people finish it with, with their sauces or you know, on top of dishes. Right. So it's not wilted uh, completely and the aroma is kind of lost yeah. in the cooking process. Okay, so that makes sense. So when using a fresh herb, you can really wilt it and cook the flavor out of it if you add it too soon. That's correct. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Chef, are you ready? So, what cooking magic can you share with the pod chefs listening about using and cooking with herbs? If you had to leave us with a couple quick thoughts about that whole concept, because we got a lot of pod chefs out there thinking about I would, I would definitely, my experience, definitely I would say that I wouldn't use a knife on any of those. Oh, like I wouldn't chop them with my knives. I would use my fingers and you know break them apart or pluck them, and then it generally goes in either hole or just kind of like hand cut oh, okay. with your fingers. Okay, so, so yeah. now now we're cooking, you guys. <laughs> All right. that, that's a great tip. So um, so no cutlery knives when chopping or preparing fresh herbs. I wouldn't use any metal knives on those. Okay. But there are, there are some knives which are acrylic and plastic, which can be used just to kind of like roughly chop yeah. some of those fresh. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so your number one go-to spice. If you were on a desert island, you had nothing else to cook with and you had one spice. Cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> I love that. Okay, awesome. Thanks, right. Chef. All right, so... Um, Chef Amon, do you have a guilty food pleasure when no one else is around? Uh, I, yes, I do. Would you like me to share? I would love to know that what that is. Yes, I love bacon. Bacon. And then that's kind of like I try to stay away from it, but I, I it's just kind of like one of those things that I have to quietly cook some in the morning uh, while I'm here by myself in the kitchen, and I have three or four slices, and that's my contentment. Uh, intake of fat I for the day. It. I love it. My guilty food pleasure when no one is around is macaroni and cheese. <laughs> you know, so Interesting. I think everyone's yes. got one, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any role models or heroes when you think about your life or your cooking or your career? Yes, I do have uh, very close to me is my uh, older sister who was in hotel management and helped with our family business back in India and her husband. He is also part of the business now, uh, and um, he is my role model. He showed me, and my sister as well, yeah. showed me a direction when I was very, very young. Wow, that's awesome. What's the one thing that is really exciting and gets you fired up about your chef journey? Um, it's, it's that challenge every day. You come in, and there's a new challenge that you have to face every day as a chef slash business owner. Yeah, and, and I love that. I love challenges because you have to overcome those yeah. every day, daily. So in your mind, can you give us an example of a cooking challenge that you recently came up against? Uh, but there hasn't been anything very recent, but yes, there have been a few uh, when I come in and, you know, when we get busy and there are some ingredients which are missing for a certain uh, 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 entree, then I have to use my... Um, I would say my um, inner energy to come up with something which is very similar to what is required for that recipe. Yeah. Instead of running to the store last minute, which I can't. Right, I have right. To, you know, I don't have much time to do Yeah, it. so yeah. You, the unexpected happens and you have to punt, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you're a yep. master at that. Yep. I, I know that yep. about you. Anything else you would like to leave with the happy diabetics out there before we go? I would say uh, stay well, eat healthy, and enjoy flavors, and don't be scared of trying new things. All right, awesome. Well, Chef Amon, thank you for making a difference in the Happy Diabetic Kitchen. Do you think I could ask you to share a recipe that we could post up on the website? Yes, absolutely. All right, so that we're going to make that a mystery recipe, right? Yes. So we won't talk about it today, but we'll get it up when the podcast comes up. One more question to ask you. Are you ready? Yes. If you could cook a meal for anyone, past or present, who would it be, and what would you cook? Um, I would cook something 
for the family member who, you know, they, they, they live in India, so I would love them to come here, and I would love them to come and try something besides Indian cuisine. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thanks, Chef Amon. That's Hemisphere's Bistro in Bettendorf, Iowa. You can find their amazing website, learn all about the restaurant at hemispheresbistro.com. Thanks, Amon, for joining us. Thank you very much, Chef Lewis. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Podcast. I'm your host, Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic. Be sure to head over to my website, happydiabetic.com, and follow me at facebook.com forward slash Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic. If you have a question, go to my website, happydiabetic.com, and hit the contact button. Send me your questions to be answered during an upcoming podcast. And hey, if I read your question in the HD Kitchen, I'll send you my cookbook as a gift. And remember to please subscribe to the podcast if you and if you have a comment, hey, I invite you to tell us what you think. We are very interested in your feedback. Thanks for listening. This week's question from a listener comes from Sue in Kansas City. Uh, we met up with Sue at the Taking Control of Your Diabetes event there. Um, she asks, balsamic vinegar is very expensive. Is there something I can use as a substitute? Thanks, Sue, for a great question. Your Happy Diabetic Cookbook of Love is on the way. Balsamic vinegar is made from sweet white grapes. It is expensive, because typically it's aged in barrels for years to kind of develop that typical dark brown and that really nice, surprising, sweet flavor. But the reality is any wine vinegar can be substituted. Since balsamic vinegar tends to be stronger in flavor, when substituting wine vinegar, use the amount called for. Taste the dish, add a little more if necessary. But Sue, I'm going to tell you the truth. I would not be surprised if you can find inexpensive balsamic vinegar that tastes really good on your grocer's shelf labeled under your grocer's brand. Check it out. Let me know. Go to my Facebook page and communicate. Tell me what you think about that. Thanks for asking the question. Okay, now it's time for the tip of the podcast. Everybody needs a new tip. This is one of my favorites. For that rich, creamy dressing, you know, that one that you want to make healthy, if you're making it from scratch, substitute half of the mayonnaise with a really great, good quality Greek-style yogurt. And let's get into our question of the podcast. This is where I want to hear directly back from you. So here it is. What's your favorite type of food? American, Chinese, Italian, French, Japanese, Mexican, maybe something else? Head over to my website, happydiabetic.com, select the Facebook link at the top of the right-hand side of the homepage, head over and tell us what you think. I would love to know. Join us next week, and we'll have a great show cooked up just for you. Our podcast is produced and engineered by Jason Lewis, our theme music by the Happy Diabetic Blues Band featuring yours truly, Chef Robert on guitar, and of course, our kitchen mascots, Scout and Tucker. Thanks for tuning in, and let me leave you with this thought. From a Polish proverb, fish, to taste right, must swim three times. First in water, second in butter, and then in wine. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and remember... No one loves you more than me.